welcome back to the Handy Tech channel. We recently built a new house in a mostly turnkey finish, but didn't pay for any landscaping, so we pretty much have a big sand pit for the backyard. I have some big plans in mind which I'm really keen to show you guys, so in this video, which I guess is sort of part one, I'll show you how I installed an automated retic system. As usual, I bought all the stuff for this job from Bunnings, my favourite store. I think in total, I spent around a thousand bucks for this system. Most of the gear is a brand called Rainbird, and while individual parts might seem cheap, it all adds up pretty quick. I had a fairly good idea in my head of how I wanted this system to work, but it helped to make up a small mud map on an aerial view of my house plans. Now I don't have a dedicated mains connection for the retic, so I'm using some adapters to tap off a garden hose outlet. This part from Holman is pretty sweet, it's basically a 2 to 1 splitter and each side has its own shutoff valve. That means I can still have a hose connection and on the other side I can adapt it into my 25mm retic piping. And the adapter is just a 25mm black plastic barb. Opposite that tap there is a small garden bed that I'm going to install my solenoids in. I've got this large plastic shroud that you can install in the dirt and it has a tidy green cover. It should be able to house all four valves in it. Now I've got to get a 25mm retic pipe and some control cabling below these bricks and the retaining wall. I had to use a combination of tools to get these bricks up, they were just packed in so tight. This was honestly probably the hardest part of the job and I'm not feeling confident getting these bricks back in, it's going to be pretty tough. Anyway, once the bricks were out, I got this little skinny spade and I dug a little trench that the conduit and control cabling could go in. Then I pissed around digging a hole below the retaining blocks which was a bit of a mission too. There was a second row of retaining block inside the garden so it was just a bit trickier. But we got there in the end and that means that I can push through some of the 25mm conduit. This stuff is pretty easy to cut with a box cutter, just make sure you use some gloves. Now I can wiggle it onto the barb fitting. To keep things tidy I installed some wall plugs and used a 25mm half saddle to fix the retic pipe to the wall. Next up I used some 20mm flexible conduit to protect the control cabling from where I will install the controller. You might notice I've already put a drawstring in there to help me pull the cable through later. Alright, let's have a look at the controller and how it will be mounted. Now there are plenty of options out there controller wise, but I'm a bit of a hobbyist when it comes to home automation. In my case, I got a Wi-Fi 4 channel relay and flashed it with some open source firmware called Tasmoda. I'll leave links for all the stuff down below. So the controller mounts on DIN rail inside this little housing. I'm not convinced that this is 100% waterproof so I might just have to silicon it up later. I made a few holes in the box so I could put some 20mm conduit glands in it. This is where I mounted the controller. It's right next to my electrical switchboard and also directly above the tap where our reticulation is connected. I used a small piece of deflectable conduit between my controller and the switchboard so I can route my power supply cable. This is where the conduit from under the retaining wall comes in. I use a second gland and mount it into the housing. There is an existing socket in the switchboard I can use and I installed two power supplies, a 12 volt DC supply to run the controller and a 24 volt AC supply to power the solenoid relays. Okay, now we need something to wire to, so let's set up the solenoids. I bought a master solenoid and three slaves. That means I can have three stations. I'm using a series of 25mm fittings to make a little system that will fit inside the plastic shroud in the garden. I chose to make these up in the workshop so I can stay out of the heat. It might not look good in the videos but it was pretty warm outside. I won't show too much of this because it gets a bit repetitive, but I made sure to apply thread tape where needed and ratchet clamps to all the barbed fittings. It all ended up nice and tidy and fits easily into the shroud. I also cut some holes in the plastic shroud so the conduit can be connected in the garden. Now I've got three stations, I need to start running the retic piping for each station. The first one goes back under the retaining wall, under the bricks and out onto what will be a front lawn. I was a little too ambitious with my original design and inspect way too many sprayers for the pressure of my system. 
So in these clips I trenched out some retic piping to all four corners of the front lawn. In the end I only needed two to cover that area but I'll show you more at the end of the video. The type of sprayers I'm using for the lawn areas are Rainbird 32SA Gear Drive Rotary Sprinklers. These are fully adjustable and can rotate 0 through to 360 degrees and also have an adjustable distance. Now we get to one of the challenges I came up against. Remember I said there was conduit installed under the driveway? Well I wanted to pass a 19mm retic pipe through but I had a hell of a time, it just kept getting snagged somewhere along the way. In the end I had to go and buy a cable snake from JCAR and that helped me pull it through. I'm a bit annoyed I had to pay for the cable snake but it was only 30 bucks and I own it now and it will definitely help in the future I'm sure. Anyway this 19mm retic I may not even use but it's just there in case and I've just capped it off on the other side of the driveway. At this point I got pretty excited and I wanted to try out the first station so I had to take care of the wiring. This shroud came with a few bus bars so I'm connecting the 24 volt AC power supply to two of them. Then I need to connect the common of each relay to one side of the 24 volt AC supply. All these smart relays do is pass AC to the solenoid relays when told to. I'm using that blue drawstring that I left in the conduit to pull five single core cables through. Four of these get connected to the normally open contact of the smart relays and the fifth black cable goes to the return of the 24 volt AC supply. Back in the solenoid housing, each relay shares the return connection and then is connected to its respective control cable. There are these gel filled crimp connectors you can use to join the cable, but I just use some blue points and electrical tape, it's what I had on hand. If it rusts out down the track, I'm sure I can fix it. Okay, first test and we have some success, but only three of the four sprayers are going well. As I said earlier, not quite enough mains pressure, we'll sort that out later. Alright back to digging, now I'm trenching up the garden beds towards the back of the property. These beds will be planted, so station 2 will be sprayers along a 19mm conduit. Right next to that conduit I've got to run a 25mm all the way to the back lawn. These retaining walls weren't backfilled properly by the builders, so I'm taking the opportunity to try and level them out as best I can. These will all get filled with soil in the future anyway. These are the sprayers I'm using along that 19mm conduit for station 2. They're still adjustable, like you can change the direction of the spray but it's fixed, it doesn't spin like the geared ones. As a consequence they're a lot cheaper. These were really easy to put in, just barbed T pieces. You can see I've used risers to elevate the sprayers above the garden level. Hopefully this will aid in coverage when the beds are planted out. I've still got to muck around and adjust these, sort of do a fine tune, but there's nothing to water yet anyway, so I'm just doing a basic adjustment for now. The final station to dig in is station 3. I've learned from my mistakes at the front of the house and this time I'm doing a straightish line diagonally across the lawn. I'm only going to install two sprayers here in the hopes there will be adequate coverage. I had to do some tricky stuff to get the retic piping down to where the back lawn will be. I basically had to run it down the outside of the retaining wall then into the ground as there's just no way I could dig under the retaining. It's not the cleanest install but I made sure to use some saddles to tie it all together nicely. Alright that's all sorted, let's give it a go. Sweet, they both work. Obviously they need some adjustment, that one's blowing straight into the shed. A little bit of a coverage issue just here. Might be able to play around with the distance off that one. And then the other one is this corner, um, obviously blocks there. I think that's just a little bit too far for this one, but I think you can see the slope there once that's leveled out. Hopefully some of the smaller drops from the bottom will be able to come that way a bit more. Um, but yeah, if I run that long enough, I'm pretty sure the roots will still get a soak. And uh, on this side, yeah, really good clearance. So it comes pretty far in here. So yeah, pretty much just that little patch there, but hopefully it's not too bad. Well, I'm pretty stoked with that. Last hard part was getting the pavers back in. It took a bit of hammering with a rubber mallet and some help from Jace, but it all turned out good in the end. Can't even tell there's conduit under there, che. Last thing to show you guys is what makes this an automated system. 
By flashing that controller with Taz Motor, I can now open a web page that gives me control of the relays. So that's great, but what if I want to run it on a schedule? Here's where automation comes in. I've added this controller device into Home Assistant, which is free home automation software. Here you can see the Wi-Fi signal quality and other info, and you can turn the relays on and off. Here's an example of an automation script. This is activated at 6am every morning, but you could add conditions, like it must be a certain day, or if it's going to rain, don't bother watering the lawns. Then I just turn the master on and the stations after that for whatever interval I choose. After it's done, turn them all off. I've also added notifications for when the sequence starts or stops. Well, that's about all for now. Hopefully you guys picked up some tips for installing your own Retex systems. In the next video, I'll show you how I installed a shed in the backyard with a few additions. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'll see you guys on the next one.